This is the EVP Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the EVP Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Beaker. I'm Ghosty. And I'm DVO. We want to thank you for listening to our last episode. It was really fun. I hope it was fun for you as it was for us. We went to Hatch Family Chocolate. We got an interview. Well, you guys got to interview Steven or Steve Hatch, yeah. owner of Hatch Family Chocolates. Um, I was so impressed by. I, I love the fact that he let us come there. Uh, I went back yesterday. I bought. 40. I love the fact that I like the fact that he was free samples at the end of the yes. episode. So yeah. to show my appreciation for his free samples, I went and bought forty dollars worth of chocolate yesterday. Nice. And, forty dollars well spent, by the way. And, yes. and I bought some dog treats for. Brandy's for dog. your dog, oh, for you, for for Elvis. <laughs> um, so yeah, while I was there, I so I took Brandy back. Mm-hmm. One to get her some chocolate. Uh, two to kind of sneak in a little bit more investigation. Oh, because she can talk to spirits, right? <clears throat> yes, it was. She, she was going to try to be there. We mentioned that, but she was going to try to be there. And Family emergency. Happened. Everything okay? Yes, he's okay. fine. Yeah, Good. yeah, everything's fine. Uh, so while we were there. She was all excited because she. And you were like, just in the main area. I'm yeah, sure. we were just in the main area. We didn't actually like investigate, uh-huh. you know, because she can, the spirits can come to her and talk to her. Yes. Right? Um, so she started kind of like giggling, and I'm like, "What?" And she's like, "The little, the kids are standing right below us." And okay. I'm like, "Oh, can you talk to them real quick?" So we were able to confirm some stuff. One. Mm. So the little boy's name starts with a T. He's claiming it's not Travis. Okay. But he wouldn't tell her. So I'm mm. gonna I'm gonna do some more sneak attacks. Okay. <laughs> I'm in a go nice buy, way that, that doesn't so, mean it's a bad thing so basically I'm going to go I'm going to take Brandy to buy more chocolate uh-huh. and see if we can get the kids to come Coke talk to because that's there. what I was getting there too I was telling you what I was getting was that it was a, the kid wasn't Travis it was an adult that was Travis I don't know right. if anybody was Travis yeah yeah but it wasn't the kid the kid I didn't. his name does start with a T right that's right. all that he would give it her. was a T but it was not Travis right and his uh, so the seven year old girl is so I was initially thinking they were twins. Remember mm-hmm. I said right, I yeah. There. So they're not twins, obviously, because she's seven, he's nine, but they are brother and sister. Oh, okay. Uh, her name starts with an A, and uh, he was kind of standoffish, didn't really want to talk to Brandy. The little sister's like, no, go tell, tell her your name. And he wouldn't do it because... Stranger Danger. Stranger Danger. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to be buying much more chocolates from Hatch Family Chocolate. Mm-hmm. Uh, located up in the avenues of Salt Lake City. If you haven't been there, go there. They're not endorsing the show. I just really love their chocolate. And yeah. I'm not a huge fan of chocolate. And it's all made there. They make it by hand. I also found out on their on their little card they gave me, they did a show back in 2010 called Little Chocolatiers. Yes. Yep. I yeah. watched the first episode. It's really cool. Go yeah. check it out. It's it on was Discovery on TLC. Plus. It's on Discovery Plus. Yeah, if yeah. you have Discovery Plus, go watch it. It's mm-hmm. actually a really cool show. But it was on so. TLC at the time. Yeah. Which is owned by Discovery Plus. So we mm-hmm. were we able to determine that... Um, so if you remember when I was using the Pendulum, I said yes. that he lived nearby. This is true. He confirmed that. He lived just around the corner. He wasn't that far away. Oh. He was just like a block away, if that. Uh, so I said he died in a car accident. Yes. Partially yes. true. Okay. He was hit by a car. Okay, yeah. So um, th- that's what we were able to get. We weren't, like I said, we weren't able to get names, but we're going to be buying a lot more chocolate seeing if we can get more information from the kids. Yeah. Uh, that's my plan anyways. I don't know if, that, if Brandy's going to go along with that. But I'll make her. The chocolate <laughs> chocolate. Now, do they know they're, they've passed, the kids? I, yeah, well, he said he was hit by a car, so okay. I think he's fully aware that he's passed. Okay. Uh, okay. An interesting situation with a Lyft driver. Told me a cool story. We'll share it on a future episode, though. Um, so she did confirm. You know how I said I was talking like Bill outside said he loved what the, they yes. did with the place? The former so, owner of yeah, the building. Former, uh-huh. She said he's still there. He just kind of roams around outside mm-hmm. watching over the place. Uh, the other, the male spirit that was there when we were there, uh, he just pops in and out. He just comes and goes. So he's not like a resident of the uh, chocolate shop like the kids are and like oh. Bill is. <coughs> so I thought it was kind of cool getting some confirmation Yeah. Uh, that of the information that we got. Yes, yes. That, uh, about how the kids kind of passed and where Great they were from. Great stuff. So I thought that I would share that with you guys. Yeah. And again, just because some place is quote unquote haunted doesn't mean it's something evil. Right? No, nothing, there was legit nothing evil in that building. Yeah. It's a very friendly, very inviting place. The energy there is awesome. Yeah. Which is why there's good spirits in there. Yeah. I was <laughs> actually really impressed with the interaction we were getting with the yeah. with that child spirit, too. Because uh-huh. it, was, it was really cool getting the both the Flux and the REM, REM pod going off. So, yeah. Go get some chocolate. They make their own ice cream, too. Yes. A lot and of their good, caramels. A lot of good stuff there. Yeah. 
What are we talking about this episode? Uh, we're talking about Dracula. Yeah. Well, this is supposed to be my Halloween episode <coughs> before I got, you know, my UTI, apparently. Yes. Yeah. I, I cranberry had, juice. Apparently yeah. I had to drink a lot of cranberry juice. And your Squatch UTI. Yeah. And now you're all you get running around the forest with your thing out. <laughs> well, don't dare me to do stuff. You know I'll do it. <laughs> Jeez. Ginger squatching. Ginger squatching. So now we're getting into the holiday seasons. Um, I'm temporarily Ginger Claus. <laughs> Get your Ginger Claws off me. I, I, you know, it changes during the seasons. Um, around Easter time, I'll be Ginger Jesus. That might offend people. I don't care. Um, oh, I met a lot of people. Before I went to hot ch- the, the chocolate, uh-huh. I went to a memorial service for a friend of mine. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of friends in from out of town. And it was great to see. Like, we were there to... You know, share the memories of the life of our, our last friend. But it was great to see all the support from these people that I haven't seen in a long time. Okay. I listen to your show. I love your show. So, oh. shout out to all the hashers. They know what that means. You guys might not. But it's my old drinking club that I used to be a part of. Okay. Um. So, yeah, there was an outpour of love from these people that are like, yeah, I listen to your show. I love your show. So, thank you to everyone that's listening. Um, and shout out to my people, the Hellfire Club. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> If you want to support us more, though, you go check out our affiliate link to Go Stop. That's where we get all of our gear. We said last week we'll post stuff. Uh, this week we actually will. Um, busy week. We have yeah. It's been I've been working sixty hours. You guys have been working crazy. The holidays are busy for us, yeah. so we're gonna try to not take a break like we did last year. We're gonna try to power through up until almost Christmas, and only take maybe a week or two off. So if you guys want to keep supporting the podcast, also in our in our uh, links. That we they put in there, there is a little tip tab. If you want to give us a little PayPal tip, we would appreciate it. Yes. So now that we've spent uh, almost seven minutes on other stuff, let's get into Brian Castle. Ooh. We're going to Romania this year. Week. Romania this, this year. year. This year. This year. Yeah. This year. Next year. Um, I would actually love to physically go there. We have six weeks to do it. We, <laughs> let's let's make it happen. Get us that that yacht, and we'll drive it over to Romania. So when, when you think of Romania, state. Transylvania, Dracula, you're 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 thinking Dracul and Vlad the Impaler, right? That's that's what you're thinking. Pretty about. much. So, so I'm gonna give just a quick little history, and then we'll get into some of the fun stuff. But I'll, I'll do a quick one, okay? So let's start. Off, let's, let's start off real quick back in the 1300s, not too long ago. It's a good time. It's yeah. A good time. Well, you, well, you know this place is definitely gonna be haunted because we're starting in the 1300s. Yeah. So it's so over that 100 year mark. So just tad over. Well, it has to be 500 years for Eastern countries well, that's true western civilization 100 years because we're not as old true so 500 years so, so we're, five, just, we're just a tad bit over i think that. we're a little over the 500 years so we're good <laughs> okay so november 1377 1377 uh the office of the hungarian king louis the great also known as louis first of the anjou issued a document granting to the people of brasov the privilege of building the castle 11 years later 1388 uh the construction is complete the castle was built on a steep on a, on a steep cliff, and has served the role of customs transferring in and out of Transylvania. Also, the role of a fortress. That was 1388. In 1407, the castle was given by Sigismund of Luxembourg to his ally Prince Mercia, the elder of Wallachia, where he could escape in case of an attack by the Turks. After the death of the Roman of the Romanian prince in 1419. Um, Sigismund took over the castle and entrusted it to the princess of Transylvania. Then in 1441, the Turks did raid Transylvania. So they did raid it eventually, uh, but John Hanyadi defeated them in Bran. So I apologize if I'm getting these names wrong, not really using my daily vocabulary. You don't speak Romanian much? Not much. Okay. Here and there. Here and there. Uncultured swine. <laughs> But then in 1459, here we are introduced to Vlad the Impaler. Vlad, Vlad Tepes. Tepes. Tepes? Something Tepes. like that. Something like that. Again, Vlad the Impaler, because that's easier. Uh, he was allied with Bran and Brasov. Uh, Vlad's army passed through Bran in early 1459. They did attack Brasov. They were just settling a conflict between the Wallachia Voivode and the Saxons. Vlad the Impaler did burn the city's suburbs and murdered hundreds of Saxons from Transylvania, provoking the Saxon community to seek revenge by later mentioning in reports that the Voivode were a tyrant and extremely ruthless, where maybe some of his 
uh, reputation started coming in. Vlad's reputation started coming into play here. So now we're introducing Vlad. There's a lot more history to this castle. Uh, we don't get into that. <laughs> when it's like nine, you know, almost 900 years old. Yeah. I, my, I math well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. That's probably 700. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there's there's so much history because of how old this place is. We don't yeah. want we don't want to bore you with all the history because we want to talk about the parent the juicy stuff, stuff. The juicy stuff. So Vlad the Impaler, right? Everybody knows Vlad the Impaler. Everybody knows that. Well, hopefully everybody knows that the character Dracula by Bram Stoker was based on Vlad the Impaler. And if you ask my daughter, my three year old, what does Dracula say? She'll tell you. Blah blah blah. <laughs> don't say blah blah blah. <laughs> You know the reference. Very I've never well. seen the movie, but I know the reference. Oh, very well. <laughs> I know it's Hotel Transylvania. Yes, yes, Go yes. Watch it. I hear it's good. That's also kids. a great history lesson if you want to know more about the. <laughs> yes. Apparently, there's a, a series on Netflix called Dracula. Is that any yeah, good? Yeah, I've been telling you about it. It is I really know. good. I, it's on my list, honestly. But, but wait, um, what's it about? The premise. So, if you've seen Bram Stoker's Dracula with yes. Keanu Reeves, oh, yeah. so this is a three part series. And I believe it's, I think it was done by the BBC, maybe, I think. Oh, you know it's good then. Maybe. I might be wrong. But anyways. He's probably wrong. I probably am wrong. But anyways, <laughs> uh, it kind of starts off that way where this person goes there to work for, um, like, I don't know, Count Dracula. Okay. And when he gets there, Count Dracula is looking really old and, you know, look frail. And as he's working there, things weird things are happening to him, and he's getting drained by Dracula, and Dracula's getting younger, and he's looking more frail as the episode goes on, and then kind of finds out what's happening, and he escapes finally, but then he ends up at a nunnery, and there's a nun there who's actually investigating Dracula and doing research on Dracula, and brings Dracula to the nunnery. By bringing this guy there, so a lot of crazy stuff goes on. It's it's pretty gory. It's it's good stuff though. Okay. So on a scale of one to five, out of all the things that I've seen that it's like Dracula based, it's up there. Okay, so he give it a four. 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 Yeah, I'm telling four him. Half. I'm telling him what his rating yeah. is on the show. I've so, never seen. I'm not answering. Um, I'm giving it a four. As we'll, well give it a four. Um, so. The reason why we're talking about Brown Castle, <clears throat> uh, Vlad the Impaler, obviously. So blah 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 blah. So the funny thing is, from what I understand, Bram Stoker never actually went to Romania. He's never been to Bram Castle, but Bram Castle is reportedly the castle that he based Dracula's castle on. Yeah, so it just sounds a, a lot like it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's uh, he saw pictures, he read things. Uh, you know, this is 1890. Uh, a lot of stuff happened in 1890. Good year. It was a good year. It was yeah. a good year. That's the Ouija boards came around in 1890. <laughs> um, this other guy, this, uh, oh, Edward. I lost my virginity that year, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So did I. It's a good year. I was in the next room. Um, <laughs> so there, uh, another podcast. Well, there'll be a future episode, but there was a guy that said he could um, diagnose people, their illnesses, and cure them while he was under hypnosis. Mm. So uh, this was all started in the 1890s. But so... He just, he's from Britain, obviously, or in England, somewhere in there. He just saw pictures, read descriptions. And so they believe that Dracula's castle in the story is loosely based on Bran Castle. Now, we do know that Vlad the Impaler possibly spent some time there. But Vlad the Impaler himself never really ruled Bran Castle. He was actually down south in uh, Wallachia. Uh, There was another castle there that I might cover in a future episode Hmm. where Vlad actually ruled. Now it's it's they believe that he passed through a lot on his uh, when he was uh, emperor of uh, Wallachia, but he never stayed there. Maybe he might have been imprisoned there for some time, but he never actually lived there or ruled from that castle, um, according to many historians. Okay. So, but that's where kind of Dracula and there, and where he got the name Dracula. I guess Vlad's father uh, was. Part of the Order of the Dragon, so they called him Vra- uh, Vlad Dracul. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was Vlad. So Vlad, the Vlad the Impaler was actually Vlad the Third. So he, uh, they called him Vlad Dracula. Was another name, or Dracula, which means son of dragon, uh-huh. like little dragon. Yes. So that's where Dracula comes from. It's ro- basically Romanian for, like I said, Dracula's dragon, Dracula, or Dracula, 
Son of Dragon, or Little Dragon. So, it is rumored that Vlad the Impaler haunts this castle. Oh. Is it true? Don't know. We'd have to go there. What I do think is funny, this is probably where you see a lot of the memes where they like, Ghost Adventures, like, goes to old Romanian uh, castle, try to investigate, ask questions in English. I can almost guarantee you, if there are spirits in Brown Castle, they're not speaking English. <laughs> right, they're right. probably speaking Romanian. So that's uh, kind of why I chose this topic. It was supposed to be my Halloween episode, um, but it wasn't. So we're doing it now. This is still Halloween for me. Halloween's <laughs> year-round. <laughs> it doesn't stop in October. Um, but uh, this this castle, this is probably going to be a short episode. That's okay. Um, this castle is supposedly haunted. I mean, it's been around since... The actual, before it was a castle, in the 1200s, it was a fortress. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was torn down for whatever reason, but it was, uh, this castle was built on top of this old fortress. So, I mean, being around for like eight, nine hundred years, there's bound to be spirits there. But actually, the word brand actually means a gate. So it was like a, the beginnings of like a fortress, a gate, yeah. In the 1200s, you're right. So, Ghosty, you got some uh, possible hauntings or some history here for us? Well, I was just going to talk about there's, uh, so like the people near Bran, the villages, they believe in the existence of evil spirits. So this is kind of like another, uh, how the whole vampires came about. Um, these are, the, are these the spirits that hunt from like midnight until, yes, yes, until yes, the, yes. the rooster crows? Yeah, so okay. these are uh, a variant of Strigoi. And Strigoi are like the uh, kind of like what they would call the vampires, but these ones are called like uh, Sterigoi, and those are spirits that are they're normal people in the daytime, but at night their soul leaves their body and they're kind of like a an undead, mm. and they go around and torment other people in their sleep. Hmm. So that's kind of their uh, their belief in these evil spirits and kind of where Bram Stoker was taking these ideas and turning them into this Dracula story. That's crazy. But uh, the ghosts, they they have some people that, uh, some ghost hunters that have claimed that there's stones that get thrown at them in the pitch black in the tunnels. So there's tunnels underneath the, ca- uh, underneath the castle. So they're investigating these tunnels and they're getting like pebbles thrown at them in the dark. And uh, they've seen um, some green mists that appear. They've also seen uh, some dark, sinister presences down there in the tunnels, as well as shadow figures that have uh, mm. appeared. Um, they've seen full-body apparitions of soldiers, peasants, and warriors. And, uh, but th- they wouldn't know why the uh, Vlad the Impaler would be haunting that. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people aren't sure. Like Some people claim they've seen them or talked to Vlad the Impaler there. Like I said... He might have been imprisoned there, but he never actually. But yeah, there would be no reason for his spirit to be, if 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 his spirit was wandering around anywhere, unless he was killed there, drastic like you know, and then his spirit got stuck there. That would make sense, but but they think he might have been killed like in battle or on the battlefield. They're not one hundred percent sure where or how he died. So he just disappeared because he's the undead. <laughs> he never died. Yeah, who said he's who said who he's said dead? he died? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, the history lesson here that I just stated just says he was on the based on the outside protecting, you know, against against. Yeah, I think the outside um, of it when the Ottoman Empire decided to invade, mm-hmm. I think he helped. Yeah. So Vlad the Impaler, like you hear all these horror stories, like how he impaled people. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's how he got the nickname, obviously. Um, and he's kind of portrayed as this, like, creepy, like, scary dude. Well, did you hear about what he did? He was impaling little animals when he was a kid. And he was, like, fixated on their last twitches before they died. That's the making of a serial killer. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what he became. Didn't they, they say he <laughs> impaled or, like, he killed somewhere of, like, 8,000 people? Yeah, and he did the same thing, impaled them, sliding them down and watching them wriggle around till they died. While he was eating yeah. He was just have dinner, watching these people be impelled. Like, some kind of sociopath, kind of oh, weird. Yeah. Well, it's like, I guess, a way to, like, deter people from wanting to come invade. It's like, this is what happens. Well, yeah, they it's fear, putting fear in people. Right. But, like, he's, like, getting off on it, too. It's scary shit. Which creates, I mean, it creates a back, a great, 
reputation or backstory that where people don't want to invade. Like, no, they got some crazy nut out there managing this army. Like, look at this field of <laughs> impaled people in front of us. Yeah, like, we're good. We're good. We're, we're, we're fine. I don't want to be there. <laughs> see, we look at him as a crazy guy doing all this stuff, right? The people of Romania, they see him completely different. Sure. He's a hero. Yeah, thanks for thanks for keeping the Turks out. Save their country. Uh-huh. So it's it's all perspective. Sure. Uh, one of the more famous hauntings that people have reported in 1920, uh, there was Queen Maria who moved into Brand Castle, immediately updated it, had it renovated, and she is said to still be there. She loved the place mm. so much. I believe currently Brand Castle is like, kind of like a museum dedicated to her. Well, you, there's so apparently they have her heart locked up in a box. Really? Yeah, you don't know. I this? No, I didn't. Tell me. Oh, let me pull this up. I would haunt a place where they kept my okay. heart in a box. After Queen Maria died in 1938, her heart was placed in a silver box that was kept in the crypt of the castle. Her daughter, Princess Ileana, built a hospital inside of Brand Castle, naming it the Hospital of the Queen's Heart in 1944. Wow. Wounded soldiers from Brasov were treated here after American aircrafts bombed the Red Cross Hospital. She worked as a nurse there herself until 1948. That's cool. I missed that somehow. Um, and then Princess, Princess Ileana and her family were forced to leave the country in the in that year because of the newly installed communist regime. <clears throat> Brand Castle was turned into into a museum, but due to the war there was a there was a lot of damage to the castle. Mm-hmm. It was restored and opened again in 1987, and in 2009, Brand Castle was returned to the legal heirs Archduke Dominic. Archdu- Archduchess Maria Magdalena Magdalena and Archduchess Elizabeth. And the castle remains open to the public to this day. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, I read, if I remember correctly, on their website, on, on Brand Castle's website, I believe it is kind of like a museum now, uh, yeah. dedicated mostly to Maria. Uh, other websites I read said it was kind of like a tourist attraction. They They sell it or pitch it as dracula's castle mm-hmm. so i'm pretty sure there's a shit ton of americans that go there every year yeah because because we love that stuff. i thought it was dracula's castle uh-huh. so did i when yeah, i hear you know, brand castle i'm like oh dracula's castle yes, and i yes. think i think i've said on many episodes when we're like where's the one place you want to investigate the most i've said brand castle right dracula's mm-hmm. castle uh i still want to go there i don't know if it's the top of my list uh, i'd rather go to the other castle i can't remember the name of it right now where vlad actually ruled um but i'd still love to go to brand castle they say some of the other hauntings or some of the other things that people see there. I believe you mentioned shadow people already, but they mm-hmm. meant people mentioned of seeing uh, light orbs or light anomalies. Uh, the a lot of people say they have gotten EVPs while they're there. Some people say they have witnessed poltergeist activity, and some people even say that they've witnessed or seen possessions going on there. Oh. Um, I don't believe that one, but this is just what people have reported. Now there was a lady last year. From Florida, from Tampa, that went and investigated Brand Castle. Okay. Now, she claims, using her dowsing rods, she claims she actually talked to the spirit of Law the Impaler. I checked out. <laughs> I heard dowsing rods. I'm I heard out. a Florida woman. And I'm- <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right. This is, that's why this is good. It's Florida and dowsing rods. Um I've had successful conversations with Dowsing Rods, but she claims, well, first off, she said they got a lot of EVPs. I wasn't able to find them. She said they were in Romanian, so the, the, that would make sense. Okay. If there are spirits there, they're going to speak Romanian. Um, but she, this is where I kind of find it a little not believable for me, because she said she was using Dowsing Rods, talking to Vlad the Impaler, and that they were responding to her questions. Now, like I said, this is Romania. We know this. We're aware of this. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I don't know if Vlad would understand English. Right. Right. Yeah. So she said she asked if she was speaking to Vlad the Impaler, and she got a yes. She asked if he ever lived there, and it said no. She asked if he was in prison there, and it said yes. So according to this lady in Florida, her dowsing rods told her that Vlad the Impaler was imprisoned there, but never actually lived there. I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I, I, and yeah. again, who said that Vlad was dead? So Right. <laughs> well, he did with the dowsing rods. <laughs> now, I want to make clear. I don't think dowsing rods don't work. I just think... I just think... 
they so pick many up things, water, they pick up precious metals. Yeah, so many metals. things can can manipulate this copper and make it do things. It, it, honestly, it could be just your your left hand is slightly tilted askew. one way, and now it's slightly askew. Yeah, and now right. and now it's, it's swinging. A thing called gravity, right? It's a thing called gravity. Yes, that, that can affect. Well, so. see, and like last week, I was using a pendulum. You can say the same thing with a pendulum, mm-hmm. which is why I took Brandy with me to kind of see if I could confirm some of the stuff I got with the pendulum. Because I even said on the last episode, like these aren't one hundred percent accurate. Sure, so sure. I kind of take, I kind of take my responses with the pendulum at face value, but I do a little more digging to see if I could confirm the information I got. Right. And some of it I actually was able to confirm. Yeah, I mean, but just, just because you know of a dowsing rod or pendulum doesn't mean the spirit knows how to work these things right. either, right? It could just be like it could just be ignoring you and just touching it, just like what, what is this thing, and just be totally just ignoring be your question. Just, yeah. Hey, they're holding this. I'm hit it. What is yeah, this? Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it doesn't. I mean it's the truth <laughs> can they work yes do they yeah, always work yeah do they always work no right and like i like i said she's talking to a dude from romania from the 1400s who's to say that he actually understands english or what the hell she's saying right that's why like i want to investigate there but i kind of want like but no speak would, of the language yeah right i would maybe want a translator so when i'm asking questions just use they, google translator and talk into it and then let it say there you go <laughs> That would be a fun way to investigate. Yeah, that's how you or I could just hire a translator. Which is what we were trying that's to use to, to pronounce some of these words was Google, Google Translator. Yeah, how yeah, do we pronounce trans- these words? We're to blow it. all this money on translators when we're trying to save up for a yacht. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> that's why we're never going to sail anywhere. <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Blowing money on translators when there's already an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> what if you don't get service? 5G is not everywhere. Then it's not worth going. Oh, Look okay. into the Brandcastle Wi Fi. Yeah. That's <laughs> <It's> probably <laughs> Brandcastle guest. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, I definitely want to go check it out. It's I still want to go check it out. I definitely want to go check out all a bunch of castles. Yeah, I mean, it does. Yeah, again, Vlad might not be there, but the thousands of people he murdered might be there. Oh, yeah. I bet you there's fields of spirits out there. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we talked about like the Ottomans invading, the Turks uh-huh. invading. Like, there's a lot of wars that went on around this place. Could you sure. imagine? Okay. For for Brandy, who can see spirits walk the way that they died, uh, at the oh, moment God. of their death, all these naked and pale people walking around this field, just wondering why why they got this big old hole going through them. I don't know that they're wondering. Okay, we'd have to ask them. Yeah, do you guys are you guys wondering why there's a big hole up your cooter? Uh, we'll translate it into Google Translate. Taint. What's the word for taint? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where they start. <laughs> Ugh. Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's juicy. That's gross. <laughs> that's a weird way to think of it, too. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Juicy. Ugh. Well, what else about Brand Castle? That's about it. I it's mean, like castle. I said, I was I was hoping there was a lot more. Like I said, there's a ton of history. We don't want to bore you with history lesson. Um, I was hoping there would be a lot more. Like I was kind of disappointed that there wasn't a lot of uh, was, evidence out there. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't find much evidence of anything. I couldn't find like I found some some uh, podcast on Spotify and. It's really hard to get into some of these podcasts. I'm going to bitch a little bit. Um, <laughs> when you're about 15, 20 minutes in and you're just barely getting through advertisements and all this other bullshit before you actually get into the episode. Yeah. We only had seven minutes of that. Yeah, we only had seven <laughs> minutes. But seven minutes was talking about our previous episode. True. And still some juicy. Of the in- still it was juicy. Very juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I was fascinated. I was scared. That's, well, Juicy could be another... I'm Juicy. Well, juicy. I'm Juicy. Scared. Juicy Ghosts. <laughs> they could, Come to Discovery Plus. Well, we could have Scared and Fascinated, the Juicy Edition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're weird. Yeah, no, I was, I was disappointed. There wasn't a whole lot more. Like, I couldn't really find any... Juice. Juice. I couldn't find anything Juicy. There yeah, wasn't a whole I, lot. There wasn't anything on Discovery Plus. There was just some random people like us talking about it. Or, yeah, or, like, their investigations, and it was... Mm, uneventful. Ev- uneventful. Yeah, so, yeah, I couldn't find much uh, evidence. If you've got some, if you've been there, 
If you or someone you know has been to Brand Castle and has evidence, please share it with us at evp.pod at Instagram and Facebook or evp.pod at gmail.com. I'm just a little disappointed that, that Brand Castle doesn't have an Airbnb. I mean, come on, I want to stay. Yeah, that would be fun. Well, exactly. it's open to the public. I mean, I want to stay the night. Do yeah, it. Just do it. Rooms. Don't stop it yet. There's 22 acres. There's like 36 rooms, I'm sure. Just bring can. a sleeping bag. No one's going to find you. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just hide. There's got to be secret passages. I can't I'm hide because sure. I'm Ginger Squatch. That's see me. Behind the curtain. Yeah, behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Your feet sticking out. Hide <laughs> in, in that uh, armor. <laughs> the night armor. In the, I'm sure, I I'm sure I'm there's some armor somewhere. <laughs> that fits me. Yeah. You just have your beard hanging out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hide. There's ginger beard sticking out of the mask. <laughs> and you're too tall, so nothing, none of it connects. <laughs> it's all spaced out. <laughs> and fat. So I have my stomach hanging out. They wouldn't know. No one would suspect a thing. No. You blend in. You blend in. Well. Yeah, I think that's, this is, was an uneventful episode. We hope you enjoyed it. It's still good. It's no, it was a good enough. episode. It yeah. was juicy. juicy it was juicy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Go see. Don't play that. Peace out, butterflies. Blah, blah, blah. This is the EVP Podcast. <laughs>